This is my last term as chair. I'm saying it on Fox News, it's done. Uh, this is my last term. I know how hard it is to ramp up with a new chair. I wanted to keep that consistency. We've made a lot of changes in my tenure with voter registration, minority outreach. The things that we've done have been historic. We need to continue that into that ne this next election, and then I'm happily going to pass the gavel to somebody else. And that was Ronna McDaniel speaking with Fox News exclusively yesterday after winning her fourth term as chair of the Republican National Committee. McDaniel defeated Harmeet Dillon despite overseeing GOP losses in 2018 and 2020 and the lack of an expected red wave last year in the midterms. Joining us right now with reaction is Harmeet Dillon. She is the chair of the Republican National Lawyers Association. Harmeet, thanks very much for being here this morning. Wow, what a contentious battle. How are you feeling this morning? Well, uh, I'm still recovering from being uh, on the campaign trail for almost uh, two months now. But what I feel good about is that I'm committed to moving forward together with the party. I've been in the RNC for six years, and I'll be there for at least the next two years. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of work to do to make sure that we're in fighting shape for 2024. And so it's up to the chair, really, how, what role she wants me to play. But uh, we're certainly open to whatever is necessary, because the bigger picture here is that Democrats are absolutely devastating our country. They're driving us into the ground. And we cannot afford for Republicans to not be united right now. So well, I look forward to taking a call and working together with her. Have you heard from her? Have you called Rana yet? Uh, no, I haven't heard from her. I was told that, you know, at some point she'll reach out. I'm sure she, like I, uh, is getting some extra sleep this weekend and trying to spend time with family that we didn't get to do over the last two months and just relax. But, you know, tomorrow yeah. is uh, the beginning of the work week, and we look forward to seeing what we can work out together. Uh, Har Harmony, you've been talking about this need for new leadership now for the last two months pretty actively. Walk us through what's most important and where you see the major mistakes within the Republican Party. What's the biggest problem? Right. Well, you know, not to focus on anything personal, just, you know, mechanically for several years, I feel like we've been behind the eight ball with respect to Democrats. So I'm a Republican election lawyer. And over the last decades, Democrats have downgraded the integrity of our elections and made it much easier for people to, uh, to vote with ballots that are sent out like shopping mailers. On our side, what we have failed to do is really look at the fact that we're losing with that early voting, be it mail voting, absentee voting, or voting early in person. And my top campaign plank was that in order for us to win, we must simply mechanically beat the Democrats at hustling the ballots for our voters into the ballot boxes as early as possible. That doesn't mean you ignore election integrity, no. I mean, that's, that's my bread and butter of what I do. It means that you've got to do both things and do them very well. And mechanically inside the party, I've asked that we set up a separate department of election operations. The party was under a consent decree for several years, for decades, in fact, that prevented us from doing that work. But that expired four years ago. And so now we really need to ramp up and make sure that as we start voting in 2024, that we are able to beat the Democrats at getting our ballots in early. And if we're able to do that, all these other excuses about candidate quality and who endorsed whom and ticket splitting and, you know, whatever excuse right. you have, it just doesn't matter when you look at how Democrats were able to elect John Fetterman, Joe Biden, the biggest liar in D.C., uh, and Katie Hobbs. And so yeah. I know we can do it. We have to commit resources and energy and, as a policy, pull together to do that, Maria. So you're saying that the Democrats embrace early voting. They push for it. The Republicans don't. Oh, absolutely. I mean, in fact, our activists have been upset still about the 2020 election. I'm upset about it. Yeah. But the fact is that it is a fact and a law. And if you are not complying with and, in fact, embracing and really beating the Democrats under the existing laws, even as you try to change them, we lose. We've seen it time and again. I've seen it with my own two eyes in Arizona. Mm. Seventy percent of the voters on Election Day there, where there were malfunctioning scanners yeah. and tabulators vis-a-vis -vis the machines, right. they were Republicans. Mm. So we're sitting ducks for that kind of problem. Okay. Harmony, thanks very much. We'll be watching uh, your uh, moves coming up, and we appreciate you joining me this morning. Harmony Dillon joining us this morning. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.